To say speechless is to use a word. Use so your I'd microphone. Be lying, wouldn't I? Use your microphone. <laughs> it's on, it's on, it works. To say I'm speechless would be to use a word. So that would mean I'm lying. <laughs> but that's how I feel. I feel absolutely speechless. Uh, I hope these things you've heard meant something to you, you can imagine. Uh, is this better? Yes. yes. Should I start all over again? No. Uh, I didn't expect I'd be speaking today. I knew I had to pay yesterday with a speech for coming to Duquesne, and that was fun. But, uh, I just want to thank all the people who had anything to do with putting this afternoon together. Uh, it's more than entertainment for me. It's more than a diversion. It's been, it's taken me 70, almost 76 years to get here. Mm -hmm. And so when I see things happening, when I see these young faces, when I see the bodies, when I see the possibility that each one of you, old and young, and in the middle, have inside of you, <coughs> all I can do is wish that you have some of the good fortune that I have. I hope that each one of you finds a way, and I'm addressing this to everybody in the audience, not only the people on the stage. I hope each one of you finds a way to tell the story of your life. Mm. It doesn't have to be on a page that's printed. It doesn't have to be on a stage where other people are watching you. But in the quiet of your own minds, and in the quiet where you make up who you are, learn to listen. Learn to find a way to express that. You only get one chance. You only get one chance. And this is not preaching. This is, as people say in the AMEZ -E -M -E church, this is witness. This is witness. When I wake up in the morning, I wake up to silence. And it's almost like there's an edge out there. And slowly but surely, like a horizon line, the silence inside of me meets the great silence mm. out there. And it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And I'll do it tomorrow morning, I hope. But moving through that silence, finding one's own words, one's own language, one's own motions, one's own people, on that horizon, beyond that horizon line, are all of your family. Not just the living, but also the dead. Because they're not dead. There's just this arbitrary line, and we'll never understand it. And that's the line that, that is represented by time, which we also don't understand. So I wish you, all of you, chance to experience that silence and that <coughs> movement through time, what is unique, what is absolutely unreproducible and will never happen again on the earth, your life. Thank you. Oh, how wonderful. Bravo. Bravo. And very lastly, I, I did forget to bring up here the choreographer of Quake who is in the house, Tina Custer, are you here? Yeah, okay, thank you. And for all the Quake dancers out here, everybody? Well, anyway, the Quake dancers, Slippery Rock, all the schools that participated, Carnegie, Pitt, Duquesne, may this be the kickoff for one of the greatest years. John Edward Weidman needs to be a household name for every single person in America, and we are on a mission. So please join us, tell your friends, pick up books, come party, okay? And your mom's house, 
video, everybody here at the August Wilson Center. This is the most beautiful theater in America, so let's make some more magic. And let's out in the lobby. All right.